My friends, Happy New Year. You've made it. Well done for making it here today. You've chosen to listen to this, to watch this. You could have chosen just to stay at home and stay where you are in your sofa watching TV or scrolling through Facebook endlessly. You could, in fact, it's New, it's New Year's Eve, you could, in fact, just sat back in your special stretchy pants with an elasticated waist and cracked open another box of Christmas chocolates, but instead of which, you've decided to listen to this. This is the time of year when people reflect on the past and consider the year again. So I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you a happy new year and to give you a little something perhaps to reflect on. We can't rewrite the past, can we? But as followers of Jesus Christ, we can look forward to the future. Maybe after your Christmas excesses, you've resolved to make a few changes in your life. 2,000 years ago, someone called Paul wrote a bit of advice on these sorts of matters when he said this, when you have heard about Christ and you were taught in him in accordance with the truth, that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on a new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Now many of us resolve to do things that will help us in some way feel renewed at this time of year. Maybe after all your festive excesses you've decided to make plans to shake things up a little. You know, new gym membership, maybe embarking on some latest crazy diet, you name it. Everybody likes to get on some sort of new year, new year bandwagon, don't they, and start afresh. Gyms are packed in the first weeks of January. People queue up to use the machines. And there are many, many diets that you can choose from. Low this, high that, choices galore. If you feel fruity, you can go for the fruit only diet. Want something more glamorous? Then go for the Beverly Hills diet. In the next few days, our collective nations will, as a whole, pledge to shed gazillions of kilograms across the Western world, maybe run for millions of miles and even quit smoking. But let's get real friends. These resolutions are just like Christmas glitter. They sparkle for a moment, but then reality sets in. How many times in your life have you tried to be a better version of yourself only to crash and burn? So here, my friends, is the New Year million dollar question. How do you truly resolve to be a new you in this coming new year? Seekers of God also might be wondering that. How can I be authentic to my faith in the new year? And for many, the burning question is, how can I kick those harmful habits, those behaviours that hold me back? How can I really put them off once and for all? Well, guess what? The Bible has a scoop for us. We all mess things up by nature, it says, and we mess them up by choice, willful decisions we make. But this is the game changer, friends. We can get a brand new nature when we decide to make Jesus the lead in our life, the boss in our life, as the Bible calls it, the Lord in our life. Paul writing again to a group of, of people and Christians in a letter thousands of years ago said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are in fact a new creation. He adds, the old have gone and the new has come. In fact, the apostle Peter, you may have heard from him, he also wrote something similar to this when he said, everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us get it by getting to know him personally and intimately. So my point, friends, is this. If you're a Christian believer and you've trusted, trusted in Christ, then you have, friends, by nature, a new nature. The word nature, translated here in the Bible, can also be translated as simply an ability, or perhaps an even better translation would be you have a new capacity. Look with me at a, a verse from the letter to the Romans. This is Paul writing again. Those who live according to the flesh 
have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. Here's the lowdown, friend, on the choices that you can make on this wild journey we call life over the coming year. Picture this. There are two roads ahead to get for you today, two possible futures awaiting you. In fact, more than that, two versions of you. First up is that same old, same old, the old school option. Straight from the Bible, it's called the flesh. You know, the old model, the old you, the classic way you've always done things. But now flip the script for a moment. There is another path, friends, the one where you're connected by this new nature, this new capacity I talked about, that God will give you. Hold up though, before you go all in, there is a little insight I need to give you, a heads up in this verse, and it's crystal clear. Listen closely. This is all about your old nature. Your personality is going to develop in that direction if you stay in that place. But here's the kicker. If you set your mind on the things of God instead, that's the direction you will go from here on forward. And that's where this idea of spiritual growth can really kick in for you. In a nutshell, friends, you have a choice to make. We all have a choice to make. We can choose to stick to our old habits or we can to listen to what the Holy Spirit says to us through his word and through his spirit. But friends, and the truth is there's always been a but, even as believers, we still want to flex that old free will. In, in other words, we would really like to, cho to still choose to dance to the old tunes, to dance with the old habits. It's not what God wants us to do, but we are free to make that choice and go in that direction if we want. And here's the deal. Even if you decide, you know, this year I'm all about following the Lord and you want to hand over your life to him, you're still going to have those old habits knocking around, knocking at the back door of your ma mind, wanting back in. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem. We all still carry around these old destructive thoughts, desires, drives even, even after God has given us that fresh start I'm talking about, even after our new nature makeover. So how do we tackle that? Well, here's a plan. Ephesians 4, 23 and 24 says, to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Again, let's just break this down for a second. So by making this decision to go in the direction, choosing the path of God, you have now got a brand new nature, a better way of saying you now have a brand new potential, a capacity, a fresh skill, a fresh ability, courtesy of God himself. Now the million dollar question is, how do you level up in this new game? <clears throat> how do you go with the plan that God has for you? Well, friends, it's all about evolving your desires and emotions. In the grand scheme of things, we usually chase after what it is our heart truly desires. So let's try together in this new year to hit the pause button and ask ourselves, how do we embrace the real deal, the real things that are being offered to us at this point in time? How do we shift gear? How do we steer towards what the spirit wants and away from those worldly distractions? All those things that repeatedly trip us up. That's a game changer right there if we can but take hold of it. How can we say goodbye to fixating on those physical things, those cravings, and pivot and focus, in fact, on our spiritual needs, letting God himself do that makeover in and for us? And here's the kicker again. Instead of being stuck in this place of guilt and fear and in the anger zone when we get things wrong, we can still, uh, even in light of our failures, have an overall sense of joy, peace, ha love, love of God and love of others. How awesome would that be if that's how you could live your life going forward into 2024? So here's the plan. 
the way of becoming the new and improved you. Let God work his power in you, renewing your life from the inside out. The Apostle Paul dropped some important wisdom to the Christians in Rome when he wrote about this transformation process in a letter to them, as I say, 2000 years ago. And his advice was this, do not be conformed to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. You see, this transformation that I'm talking about, it's not saying here it's about gramming more religious ideas into our lives. It's simply about understanding and applying the very basic truths of the gospel, the basic truths we see in the life ministry of Jesus himself and his words, of course. And then, as God has already said, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. That's the way we can align our thinking with the thinking of God, even declared here 4,000 years ago by one of the Old Testament prophets. So let's just rewind for a sec and try and soak this wisdom up. The Those who are still stuck, still accommodating the old nature, the remind for them, for us, will remain locked into all those things that our physical old nature craves. But on the flip side, those who've made the decision to live with the Spirit, then our minds are bound to focus on what the Spirit, the Spirit of God, is telling us. So, getting real about becoming a new you in the new year is not about scribbling down New Year resolutions. It's a whole shift of perspective you need, a renewal of how you think, emotionally and spiritually. And let me tell you, friend, that is a day in, day out commitment. It's not a once in a year New Year's relation type once a year gig. And that's why the psalmist wrote, blessed is the one who delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his word day and night. The translation of that, my friends, is very simply when life throws you a curveball day or night, your brain should immediately kick into gear thinking, what is the God-like move here? What is the Christ-like move here? What is the Christ-like response here? What would Jesus do? It's a total overhaul and different way of thinking and approaching things. So let me ask you, do you want to soar in the spirit this year? Or do you are you happy crawling along in your old destructive ways of thinking? Here's the Here's the deal, friend. God has got the power to help you choose joy over cynicism this year, to choose love over hate. I get it. It's not always going to be easy. This is not a walk in the park. Not, and maybe you grew up in an environment where crawling in the dirt was kind of your norm. Well, guess what? Today is the day you can choose to break free from that. If you're all in, for it being a new year for you, a really new start in the coming year, then listen up, friends. There's a way to tap into that power and make the changes you really need, the things you're itching to change. Check this out. This is how we do it. Ephesians 4, 20, 24 tells us, However, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Christ Jesus? You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off the old self. It is being corrupted by its deceitful desires and be made new in the attitude of your mind and put on a new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. There you go, friends. Absolutely. It's all about this renewal game. But here's the real deal. You have got to participate in it. You have got to flex that willpower muscle, if you say, uh, uh, as the way I would describe it. So check this out. This passage is all about you making a wardrobe change, a real life change. It's a bit like changing the clothes you wear. Have you ever tried 
dressing a child that's not cooperating. God wants to redress, re-robe you. Trying to dress a, a child that doesn't want to change clothes, chaos ensues, doesn't it? But, but here it's talking about teaming up with God's Spirit and actively allowing him to prompt you and push you towards the choices that will send you in the right direction here on. Maybe in the past your old nature steered you wrong. It did for many of us, I'm sure. But guess what? Today is a new year. Tomorrow is a new year and a new day. And you can get to choose to pick the high road. You can choose to soar instead of have to crawl through this life. So as we hit the turn of the year, I think we've all got a decision to make. Do we repeat the same old script or do we embrace some new things? Do we keep replaying the old mistakes or we try? do we try and tune in to the Lord's prompting, the God's prompting in our lives? And here's the trick. We simply have to live by the Spirit, accept who we are before him as, as fallen and failed and allow God's Spirit to actually nudge us towards this new life. And you know what? The promise of the Bible, as I read it, says you'll actually enjoy that process. You'll actually find joy in that happening. Not that means everything's going to be good, but especially when life hits you with things that are tough, then there's going to be a real opportunity. It's going to be a chance for you to experience the real deal of living by the Spirit, choosing to fly around or even through these challenges when you used to have to crawl and be weighed under by them. So as we wrap up this new year together, here's your challenge for you and for me in the upcoming one. Got things, what you want to change in the new year, you want to make over in the new year? Are you yearning for that renewal? I know I am every day. So this isn't about throwing down some half-hearted new resolutions on a piece of paper. This is about taking a deep dive, a commitment into something real. I'm throwing down the gauntlet. I'm challenging you to focus on the renewal of your life in the coming year, to deepen your spiritual game. Commit to living your life, a life that is renewed through intentional choices. Because here's the big thing. To be the new you, you need to have that new nature I'm talking about. A mindset locked into the fresh, better choices that God will allow you to make. And to wrap it up, let me hit you with one last dose of wisdom from this thing we call the good book, the Bible. 2 Corinthians 3, chapter 16 and 18. Whenever they turned their faces to God as Moses did, God removed the veil and there they were face to face. They suddenly were able to recognise that God is a living personal presence, not just a piece of chiselled stone. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old contradicting legislation is recognised as obsolete. We're free of it, all of us now, nothing between us and God, our faces shining with the brightness of his faith. And so we are, and so we are transformed much like the Messiah for our lives are gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. So let's cut to the chase, friends. I'm not suggesting that what you need in any way is just a surface level change of heart next year. I'm talking about allowing God to give you a full renewal of your emotions, your mind and your will and the choices that you make. But here's the key. If you make that decision, it's not a solo mission. I'm asking you to surrender your life over to him, to Jesus, to allow him, to let him weave his new nature into your very being. That's going to be a game changer if you allow it to happen. It's no longer going to be about dancing to the beat of the old drum, to the drives of the old nature. They used to run the show. It's about turning it over to the fresh prompting of the Holy Spirit of God and allowing him to run the show, which is your life. So here's the challenge. Let's kick off the new year by embracing a new, renewed you. 
one that can be led by the Holy Spirit of God himself, and that will be marked by the choices, the new choices, the different choices that will reflect the fact that the Bible tells us that God himself is now living within you. It's time to trade the old for the new, to soar to heights you never thought possible. Are you up to it, friends? Are you ready to bid farewell to this year? My prayer for each and every one of you is that the light of God pierces through the darkness for you, the particular, unique, dark areas of your life, eliminating the depths of your heart, both, well, individually and for everyone around the globe. And for those of you who are really battling with hard times or with life's challenges, for those who you who feel lost or stuck in the shadows, I ask for nothing else that that radiant presence of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, shines on you to transform your life, even at this very moment. And I especially want to remember those who are carrying the heavy weight of a loss at this time of year. For every soul yearning for comfort and for the presence of God and the promise of new life, I pray that you might experience it at this time of year. And may our prayers resonate together and may we all individually and collectively be vessels through which that godly divine present touches us, those around us and in fact the world today. Allowing us to be motivated to go beyond our narrow boundaries, to step out and serve as the hands and feet of God in bringing light and comfort to anyone struggling or feeling lost. I evoke the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Light of the World, Emmanuel, God with us, in order to do, reveal that and do that for each and every one of us this new year. Thanks for being with me. I do hope you found that little message helpful and maybe one way in which you can, can transform your life is make the decision to make the study of what God says through his word part of the rhythm of your daily life. And you can do that by following the links to my Bible Project daily podcast. The project is to work through the whole Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. I'm about 700 odd episodes in, two and a half years into what I believe will be a 10 year plan. Why not make the decision to follow the links and to start listening or watching and learning what God says, what I believe God says through his word and make it part of your each and every day. And what better type of year, time of year to do that than here as we turn from 2023 to 2024. Bless you and thank you all for taking the time to listen to what I've had to say today. Bye-bye for now.